part three. So I told him, you call the cops. I'll be outside waiting for you. You get off at five. It's uh, 1145. I've been here for almost an hour. When I get my check, you better show me some respect. I'll snatch your ass over this counter and throw you an ass whooping from hell. And anybody who tries to stop me, you can get the same damn treatment. Now, mind you, I'm only five, three and a half. And Don, hi Don, was a good five, ten. And the other two guys was a good six, one, six, two. All three of them white, which is irrelevant to this, but they are all white. And so I took my half breed ass outside with my radio, jumped in my little green machine, and drove my car over into the Hallmark parking lot on pan tops. Hallmark's not there anymore. It's a restaurant now. So I legitimately went over there, and I waited. He must have caught the cops pretty goddamn fast because no sooner than I got back out my car, the cops rolled over. They came up there with the lights flashing and everything. And they searched Burger King parking lot. I'm sitting over here on my green car, little Ford Festiva, Fiesta, whatever the hell you call it, the damn thing. And I look at the cops and I start talking. I said, oh, I'm the guy you're looking for. And he's like, what? I said, yeah, I'm the guy. I'm the guy you're looking for. It's like, but why would you confess? I was like, okay, two things. One, you can't arrest me because I'm not over at Burger King parking lot. And two, I can wait out here all damn night. I can threaten anybody I want until I act on those threats. You can't do shit. I said, I got all night. I said, how much time y'all got? I said, well, we can arrest you right now. I said, no, you can't. I said, how you figure? I said, because see, I used to know how it works. I used to want to be a cop. And unless... I act on that threat, you got nothing. Now, the laws have changed since then, because now you actually can be arrested for threats. But back then, in the mid-90s, couldn't do shit. They couldn't do shit. And they realized that. So they patrolled for about three to five more minutes. I think one of them went in and talked to them. And then I had also explained to them, I said, but one, first off, the dude don't tell me that I'm a half-breed and I can't fight my way out of a wet paper bag. And two, if you're going to open up your mouth, you damn sure better be able to fight. Because if you can't, that's your fault if you get your ass beat. Which goes back to the whole thing back at school. Or don't delegitimize somebody that you don't fucking know. Don't do that. If you don't think the person's intentions are good, or if you don't think the person can show you skills, or have skills, or they're a charlatan, then that's fine. But don't go getting shit started that you can't finish. Don started something that he couldn't finish. And FYI, I threatened him twice. Because he was looking at my little sister when she was only 16 at the time. And I threatened him then too. Which is why Mountain Valley would probably never give me another job working for Burger King. Of course, they never got my side of the story. So it's not like it really fucking matters. The fact that he uh, was doing sexual things and threatening people does not count. And Charlottesville's been full of racists forever, and no one just wanted to live it on the surface. But I've, most of my racist incidents has been reverse racism, like today. So this dude legitimately wanted to delegitimize me, but instead of doing it to my face, he does it in a slick manner. Let's get the security guy to leave the martial art guy, and let me go talk to him outside real quick. And they weren't really somewhere where I could find them, but they were just out of sight, out of mind. As you know, I told a guy the story about how a guy wanted to beat me up because he want, wanted to prove something and he thought I was talking to his girlfriend and I had a Pepsi bottle. And he didn't think that the Pepsi bottle could do damage. And what I told him legitimately was, and that guy's name was Greg that I was talking about, I said, here's the thing. First of all, I know Kung Fu, and I'm not scared to use it. Secondly, I have a Pepsi bottle. And Greg, being the brave and bold person who was knocking out grown people back then, said, you know I knock out grown people. And then I said, well, there's two things you got to understand. First off, maybe those grown people just couldn't fight. Second off, maybe you got lucky. 
And the third thing you got to understand is that I have a Pepsi bottle. And I'm going to use it to kill you if you don't let me go home. I don't care that you've knocked out grown people. I'm not afraid to kill you to get home. Uh, before I go home, and take whatever money you got to replace this Pepsi. Because my mama only gave me enough money for one Pepsi. And if I have to use it to hurt you, then so be it. And Greg got a little laugh on. Tom also, it's a plastic bottle. Then they had to make a point. If paper can cut you, what the fuck do you think plastic can do? And every one of my uncles on both sides of my family, except for two, have been in the military. And you think they didn't teach me some shit that they were taught? Really? And after that, Greg and I never had another problem. I wasn't trying to get with his girlfriend because I'm not a home wrecker. And I went home. It was never another problem after that. Hi, Greg. So, after telling them this and showing them some stuff, that's when the old veteran decided that I was not a legitimate person. He wanted to delegitimize my shit. That's cool and everything, but if you're going to delegitimize me, do it to my face. Tell me like a man. I don't believe your shit. I think you're a liar. I don't think you can fight. Cool. Here's how we settle that. We can both walk away like men. We can both talk like men. But we can go get the gloves. And then I can legitimize your delegitimization of me. So in closing, I want to ask y'all. Am I wrong for being a little bit mad for this dude thinking that I was bullshit? Which y'all probably would say, yeah. You know, and that's cool. Because you're entitled to your opinion. But like I said, I'm not here to put anybody down. I'm not here to disrespect people. But I also don't have to take no shit from people either. And before you try to delegitimize anybody, especially when it comes to fighting, you might want to go a couple of rounds. If you can go a couple of rounds, and then you find out, hey, psh, motherfucker ain't shit, okay? Then you can delegitimize motherfucker. But if you go a couple of rounds and you lose... Well, somebody got to shut the fuck up. Simple as that. And before I close on that, here's the thing. I'm not issuing this asshole a challenge. What I'm telling them is basically this. You don't fucking know me, dude. How you gonna go tell some young man that I'm bullshit when you ain't never seen me fight? You don't fucking know me. You know I go to the school in which you work at and which you clean up. To the school in which he works at and which he cleans up. I don't run around the school and spring off walls and punch people in the face. Granted, I can do that because I have been trained to do that. It's also how I have beaten legitimate black belts because they don't know the shit that I know, which makes me dangerous. The shit that I know, they don't teach you in schools no more. The shit that I know wasn't taught to me in a school. I figured it out. Here's the thing about war. On a battlefield, I learned this before I went to the army, and the army confirmed it. On the battlefield, the battle fucking feel always changes in the midst of the fight. Period. It doesn't matter if your side is winning. It doesn't matter if your side is losing. What matters is when that tide turns, you need to be able to keep your head. I learned that also in the art of war. In the Art of War, it simply states, you send in all the badasses first that think they're badasses. So once all the pawns are dead, the real warriors come in and clean up their mess and take out all the bad guys on the other side's real warriors. So you can delegitimize me all you want. And there's two ways we can handle it. We can talk about it like men, or we can go put the gloves on and spar and see how legit my shit is. If you're going to box me, yeah, you can outbox me. You might win if we box. But if we go straight martial arts shit, psh, no contest, bro. You ain't delegitimizing shit here with that. You want to find out, you can go ask some of the people that I've sparred with in my 20s and in my 30s. That's a different whole ball game right there. But if you want a sparring match, you go buy the gloves. We can hook it up at the Piedmont basketball court in which you clean up. And we can go from there. And if you're watching, you're a dick. Be seeing you.